Telestream's been in the cloud business for a while now. Uh, we acquired a company three and a half years ago uh, and then rebranded them called Telestream Cloud Services. And they are the software as a service arm. So does everybody know what software as a service really means? Uh, it's essentially that you're just getting one bill, right, for hardware and software. And so we offer that. But then here all the way to the right, we also offer what we call infrastructure as a service. So if you want to buy a license of Vantage, which is our flagship product, or already own one and install it on a private cloud, you pay your cloud provider for the infrastructure, a virtual machine, and you pay Telestream for your license or you move it up there yourself. And what we've done uh, with our Vantage version 8 release, and we announced and showed at NAB, and we have some early adopter customers beginning to do now, is we have this middle piece. You might want to call it a hybrid extension called Vantage Cloud Port. And it sits in between your software as a service billing engine, where it spins up containers on demand uh, and executes those services, but uses that workflow orchestration that a lot of you in this room are very familiar with, very comfortable with uh, inside Vantage. If you just have like a library of stuff and you need to make just a bunch of proxies, then our flip commodity service is great. We also offer QC as a service. Again, we've grown while others have shrank and disappeared. Years ago, we bought the company VidChecker, and we then took their solution, and we've deployed it as a software as a service as well in the cloud. So if you have to supply a file to Netflix, and you want to run a QC report to see if there's any video hits, that the file wrapper is right, that it passes the photon test, you can do that and just pay per minute that you ran. Uh, if you need to check something to supply to the UK and make sure it's DPP compatible, uh, you can do that and run the photosensitive epilepsy tests. We also have a service called Time Tech Speech because, again, while others shrank, we grew. We acquired uh, the makers of Mac Caption Caption Maker years ago, and we took some of their technology, uh, which uh, was really just sort of a backroom science experiment at first, and lots are now doing it, uh, where we basically listen to the soundtrack and we create a transcript. Lots create the transcripts for lots of different reasons, including search like an IPV and uh, you know other catalog and asset management systems. But we've got a dedicated cloud-enabled UI to then edit that transcript and make closed caption and subtitle files that are legally compliant. You know, not too many words per minute, and such. And you can move it upper upper center, lower center, you know, uh, uh, scroll on, pop on, and all that. So when you think about Telestream, I really want you to think about this diagram because we can help you with your solutions all the way from ingest and capture of live signals through that transformation, whether that's transcoding, closed caption, subtitle manipulation, automation of trimming out black and putting in black, packaging, you know, uh, we're about to start shipping our IMF producer uh, packager. Uh, uh, this quarter, streaming and re-delivering and monitoring that. I want you just to think of that whole content life cycle. We can help you with all that. So we're here to talk about the cloud, right? And by the way, backing up just a second, the reason I want you thinking about this is the cloud is just a choice where you're going to deploy. If we can solve a problem for you, and we're really good at solving problems. Eric here to my left, he's really, really good at solving problems. He's my, he's my secret weapon. I always joke him and everybody else in terms of solving technical and workflow problems. But if we can solve that problem, and I'm, if you bring it to us and give us you know, a little bit of your time and you give us a little time back, we probably can. So think about the cloud as a deployment and as a way to open up to the collaborative benefits as well. One such place that we've gotten a lot of splash that we did this is the Fox World Cup, both the men's and the women's. This is a screen from the uh, uh, men's snapshot, where we took our capture box, and it was located in Moscow, and we encoded files that went to an asset management system in the cloud, as well as then stored high res locally, and then editors working on Premiere, uh, and creating cut lists out of the asset management systems 
and all asset management systems can generally do this. So we are very, uh, we play nicely with everybody. Uh, they would create a cut list to highlight real. A little tiny little XML file would go back to Moscow and it would get married up with the high res storage that happened to be sitting there. We'd create a highlight reel using our post producer module and then push it in for playout or for EVS usage and stuff. And that's a kind of projects we're getting pulled in more and more and more. Uh, Eric and I were just down at a gaming company doing a very similar project where they're taking uh, uh, encapsulated feeds, right? So, and there are multiple encapsulation methodologies and they're recording them and they're sub clipping them and they're distributing them and you know, more and more is being done in that collaborative and cloud-efficient distribution, which if we can get it up there once, keep it up there, and then only push it down to the players when we need to. So this is a sort of a calling card use case of ours. Getting back to Cloudport. So I've mentioned some of this. Cloudport acts as that agent, that enabler between your persistent or permanent license and your software as a service consumption-based uh, usage. Uh, with Vantage 8 and later, so uh, which is out in the marketplace, so uh, you know there's a couple of you that are on a little bit earlier versions. Um, it leverages any and multiple clouds and multiple locations with each, within each of those cloud providers' fabrics. Microsoft Azure, who we, we are at the highest uh, partner level for media entertainment companies possible. AWS, Google, IBM. So... One Vantage system can contract, if you will, an individual task, an individual we call an action, if you've ever seen Vantage workflows, and Eric's going to show you some of those, can contract that one action to run on any one of those clouds and any region wherever it is so that we can help you manage your egress fees, right? Everybody, when they talk about their cloud, they're like, yeah, but I don't know. It's up there. i got to pay for it to get down. So we make it easier for you to not have to pull things down and move it around. We also have a way of not just being aware of where your media is, but your system utilization aware. So if you prioritize a job more important than anything else, and your system's uh, overtaxed for the moment, we can move the media up to a cloud if you allow us to and enable us to, transcode it in the cloud, bill you per just output minute, and then return it down, distribute it there, whatever it is you need to do. And one thing that a lot of customers, as we talk to this, will find it interesting is you don't have to have that license that you couldn't quite justify before. All right, I love talking, Tony loves talking to people about post-producer and how powerful it is. If you don't have enough need to want to buy that permanent license, you can just, if you will, rent it by the output minute every time you use it up in Telestream Cloud. That becomes really powerful as well. Um, so there are, main, uh, there are main five actions that have been enabled within Vantage Cloudport. Our analysis option, our FLIP64, which is our newer of the general purpose transcoder, uh, IPTV for making cable labs, transport streams, multi-screen for making adaptive bitrate packages, post-producer for doing that auto-assembly kind of work, and time text flip for manipulating your caption and subtitle files. So with that, we pretty much cover most of the use cases. There's a couple edge cases where, you know, watermarking with somebody else's technology and different things, you know, just as you, uh, as the cloud becomes a, a, uh, a collection of all these different services, there's a lot of stuff that needs to take place there, but we are working hard on that, and I'd say about 90% of what we do is already covered through Cloudport. Eric's going to show you a little bit of this, but I've mentioned it. These are two snapshots where also in Vantage 8, we added two new services, a location service and a utilization service. I sort of mentioned that. So you can see in here on the leftmost screen uh, in the upper right box, that little Q with the T in the middle of it, that action has been cloud enabled so that you can run it in the cloud. And Based on the file you give us, we're smart to know, is this a file path to, you know, the SNS or Quantum or whoever storage is sitting right next to my server? Or is it a path to a, an Azure storage or an S3 bucket? And based on that, we will process the job 
where it makes sense, as you've told us. Similarly, the utilization model. I Let Larry show us the cool stuff. Come on, let's go. I'm going to. Let go, Eric. So the one thing that's going on here is when it hits the workflow at that point, we immediately spin up those containers, and we will handle all that media management for you, moving assets up and or down. Everything that you're going to want to do, you know, it's, it's not this magic, weird science of, you know, how much is it going to cost me? Everything has a skew. You can see on the price list on the left, uh, and this is published. And not only that, but when you configure that individual action, okay, if you can see it in the green, although it's fuzzy from where I'm standing, um, we tell you what that's going to cost you ahead of time. If it's, if it's a high frame rate, if it's high def, standard def, low frame rate, depending on what it is, kind of file you're making, we tell you what that'll be so you can predict and decide. And with that, Eric's going to come up here and uh, show you a little bit of uh, uh, what we can do. But again, I want you to walk away. We are truly, truly hybrid. You can use Telestream's leading products where you want it, when you want it, and how you want to pay for it. Let's uh, get, get us on the screen here. See, that's, that's exciting there up there. Boxes. Lots of boxes. Boxes, boxes and boxes. Automated workflow. Okay. So uh, what Larry mentioned was all of our cloud solutions. Let's go into my web browser here. So this is, um, this is our Telestream Cloud kind of dashboard. So, sorry, if you all hear me here. This is our uh, Telestream Cloud dashboard. So it's very easy to go to the cloud.telestream.net and, and sign up with a subscription for any of these cloud products that we do offer. So Larry mentioned the pure SaaS models. That's your flip right there. There's your speech to text, which will dump a, a transcript back down into Mac Caption or Caption Maker, fully timed and pretty much gets you about 80% there with a little bit of spelling and punctuation. You can run all your daily stuff through there. Uh, we have quality control, which is VidChecker. And then there's Vantage Cloud Port. So for any existing Vantage users, you might have an on-prem system or you have a persistent Vantage system up, up in the cloud or your private data center. Um, the way this works is basically, uh, I'm going to show this first workflow here. So for the folks that aren't uh, familiar with Vantage, this is called a workflow. And the reason why we call it a workflow is uh, typically your flip service, right, your file in, file out. Everybody can make a file. Vantage is all about workflow automation. So this particular uh, workflow is called CloudPort based upon utilization. So if I go ahead and zoom in here, uh, one is a watch folder for my on-prem system. So you have a NAS or a SAN, you're dropping files in, you want to transcode them. And one watch folder is looking at uh, my S3 bucket up in AWS. We have a location action that basically determines is it local, or is it in the cloud, right? So notice my in the cloud branch here, I have not activated that in a, a cloud port yet. So basically very simple, right click in the action, cloud mode, and then I can basically connect to my S3 account with my S3 credentials. And that little hat that Larry mentioned kind of appears right there. And then uh, uh, your price per content minute shows in live right here. So. Uh, that's just an example uh, where you can get real-time feedback uh, from the system to, uh, to see how much it's going to cost you. Another uh, kind of uh, function for CloudPort is uh, based upon utilization. So if you do have an on-prem system, you have a watch folder, you have what's called a utilization action. So as an example, maybe I drop in 100 files and I set a threshold. If X amount of files uh, go uh, into the queue, then automatically use this decision branch, this is one of the kind of the, uh, logic branches within uh, Vantage, go ahead and process that, process that in the cloud. These are pretty, uh, fairly simple workflows. Now, just a very, just a quick note, I'm not going to run anything for these workflows, but our pure SaaS models can be triggered from Vantage as well, called CloudFlip, called CloudQC, and also called CloudSpeech. You can trigger those from a Vantage workflow if you were already an existing customer. So let's go to one of these fun workflows that Tony's been uh, anticipatory anticipating over here. So um, so using the power advantage analysis, you know, lots of boxes. I'm not going to go through every freaking box in this workflow, but the whole <laughs> but the whole idea here is I built this for a customer. Uh, basically, they have everything up in the cloud. They don't have any on-prem system. They don't want to. They don't want to process anything locally. So basically, they're going to drop something in an S3 bucket. 
We're going to analyze that, get some media properties, the width, the height, the frame rate, the duration, the video bit rate, et cetera, and do some qualification in those files. Fail the, fail the file if there's less than two channels of audio. Is it HD or is, is it SD? If it's not true 720 or 1080, fail it. If the bit rate's are <laughs> below 80 megabits per second, fail it. If it's not a valid uh, distribution format frame rate, fail it. If there's no time code or if there's time code, fail it. If it has color bars or slates more than, or if it has black more than five seconds before program, fail it. All this stuff is coming from analysis and basically basically allowing them to triage that content in an automated, automated fashion. Another thing we're also doing on here um, in this particular workflow is, yeah, there we go, there we go. Uh, we're doing some curtain detection, black detection, and slate and spot analysis. The reason why I'm doing black detection is if they're episodics or for uh, long form content, they're gonna have act breaks. So the rule here is if the act breaks are longer than two seconds, we're gonna automatically uh, analyze those black areas and normalize all those to one second uh, black segments within the content using Post Producer. This is a workflow that Eric built for the customer who wants to distribute some linear content for OTT video on demand. So that's why pulling out these blacks is important and we were able to do it in an automated fashion. For exactly. So no bodies, no humans. Now, uh, now, again, when you're doing logic and workflow automation, you have to build in all the types of different variables that might come in on your source files. But that's what uh, Telestream Professional Services, myself, and other engineers have been doing this for years. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, in, um, in my S3 management console, I'm going to drop a file into my, into my bucket here. And here's my CloudPort watch folder. And we're going to paste that in my bucket that I'm monitoring. So this is just a very simple, uh, very, very small file. And I'll get into my job status. And you'll notice now that my job has triggered. And now it's basically, it's calling out to tell us from cloud. Again, you see that little hat right there. I'm actually doing an ana analysis up in the cloud. It's pulling from my S3 bucket. And everything that has this little Telestream cloud hat within my workflow is going to be processed in the cloud. If I go back to my Telestream cloud, go to my cloud port, um, there's, my, there's my queued job right there. So what, what it's doing right now is spinning up an EC2 instance. Um, and basically, the way this works is once it spins it up in a region and you start submitting more and more jobs, it's a hot zone. And uh, it'll it'll immediately start spinning up these what are called Docker containers and then processing all your media. So that's kind of the round of the world loop there. I mean, you know, it's a, it seems pretty simple, but the stuff that we do there is actually pretty difficult, but we make it easy for the user, you know. Put to the, Put to the table the at Telestream, you'll be able to see these workflows. Eric will be able to walk you through it. Again, we're gonna have a Q&A at the end as well. Again, I've sold with Larry and Eric a lot of solutions across the country. The, the workflows that happen with Telestream Vantage and now with the cloud solutions, being able to do it on demand and just buy what you need is, is kind of making it available for everybody. You should really do your research. Please ask them questions in the Q&A, please, at the end. So thank you guys very much Thanks, for coming Tony. up and showing this. Um, I also encourage you to understand from a mid-tier to a large and even small workflow with Vantage, the ROI, being able to have editors edit as opposed to transcode and render and the cloud solutions, it's, it's a very fast return. <laughs>